I grew up in Charlestown, out in the woods, and my father went hunting and fishing and quahogging and clamming to keep us in food. He always worked one or two jobs, sometimes for a farmer, sometimes in a mill, but he always hunted to get that deer so that we would have venison to go with our potatoes and our johnny cakes and whatever goods my mother had canned. But when I was 15, we moved from that little house into the woods, and we moved to Exeter. And my dad, by this time, was working in Connecticut. And every day, he'd go to work, and he'd come home, and he'd work in his garden. All through early spring, he planted his garden. He had corn and beans and squash. He had radish and lettuce and a few mel melons, and he'd take care of his garden. As the plants came up, he would every day come home from work and take pails of water and make sure that they were well away. His rows were just so. He knew the radishes were going to be the first ones up, and then the lettuce, and he'd be watching his tomatoes and hoping his corn would grow straight and tall. My dad really loved his garden. But since we moved over here, he never went hunting anymore. But he kept his garden. Well, spring was starting to turn into summer. And oh, that garden was looking lush and green. Everything was growing just the way he wanted. And one day after work, he went out there and as he walked up and down the roads, he could see some, some of the things were being eaten. He couldn't understand what was happening. They looked like they had been gnawed. And he looked down very closely and he'd say, something's in my garden. And he'd stand up and scratch his head and say, I can't figure out what it is. I'm looking for tracks, but I'm not seeing any. Well, this went on for two or three weeks. And one day, he got up early in the morning, ready to go to work, and he was standing up on the hill, looking out at the garden. And he could see the corn stalks were sort of moving, but there was no wind in the air. And he says, there's something in my garden. He called my mother. El, El, come and look. And she came outside and she said, what is it? He said, there's something down in that garden. See where those corn stalks are? There's something moving. I can't tell what it is. And he's looking and finally he said, it looks like a woodchuck. And my mother said, Mark, Mark, go get the gun. Paula, go get the bullets. And my brother went into the house and he went into the closet and he got out my father's shotgun. And I went up into the cabinet and opened the can and took out two bullets and I brought them outside. My mother loaded the gun and my father looked down there and he said, it is a woodchuck. And my mother said, yes, take the gun, take the gun, shoot it, shoot it. And my brother and I were looking, trying to see it and we could see something moving. And my father said, that's a big woodchuck. And my mother said, shoot it, shoot it. And my father said, Look, look, there are little woodchucks. It's a mother woodchuck, and she has babies. And my mother said, yes, shoot it, shoot it. And my father didn't take the gun. He stood there looking at it. And my mother said, well, are you going to shoot it or not? And he said, well, I should. And he scratched his head, and he said, but you know what? 
I think there's enough out there for both our families. And my dad never went hunting again. Support this and other great podcast content at our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash artways. Tomaquag Arts programs are sponsored by Amica Insurance. Auto, home, life, Amica. The Indigenous Artways podcast is funded in part by the Rhode Island State Council of the Arts. Investment in arts and culture. Music presented by Eagle and Hawk. www.eagleandhawk.com